Guys, gals, and no minor pals, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mar, and we make art or something similar to it here. So, here I am, I'm back after two months, a month and a half. College has been kicking my ass a lot lately, so I'm sorry. But I'm gonna make a super basic introduction to Pain Tool Say or Pain Tool Sai. That's the way I pronounce it, I'm sorry. And the things that I think that will be helpful to someone who is just beginning with this software, with this program. So let's dive right into it. First of all, we're going to explore this whole screen. See, on the left side, we have all of our tools. And on the right side, we have the layers panel. This is the way I have organized my screen and you can organize it this way, but I'll dive right into that a little bit later. First of all, we have the color wheel where you pick the colors that you're gonna use and you can add more tools to this, which I do not use. I have not touched, so I just use this color wheel. Then we have the general tools the pens, the aerographer, brushes, eraser, the bucket, all of this. And you can make new tools as well, and I'll explain that later. And underneath that, we have this panel where we can modify these tools, the size, the minimum size, the density, and some more stuff like the shape of it and the texture, but I'll explain that later. And here underneath, we have the different sizes that we can choose for our pen or brush or anything to be. To organize your screen to your liking, you can go here to window, Vendana, here, or use the W. And here you have all the tools, all the panels that you can add to your screen. And I put the layer panel on the right and I could have it all on the right or maybe all on the left, but I don't like it that way. So I just go here, window, and uncheck the color one. So it goes on the left side and I have the right side here. And you have other options, other panels here. Just click on them so you can see them like this, the navigator one. I don't use it, so I don't have it. I like to have my workspace as clean as possible, so this is the way that I do it, but just do it the way you like it. Before we see the right side, which is the layer side, we have to make a new canvas, a new layer. So we go to File, we press New or Control Plus, and, and then we can make a new canvas. Everything is in Spanish because the program is in Spanish because that's my first language. But I'm gonna translate some stuff that I think are important. We have different like presets of the sizes. I usually use A4 and the resolution I try to be pretty high, minimum 300 pixel inch. So if you wanna print something, maybe you don't lose resolution and it looks good try to make it as high as you can let's say you don't like any of these sizes you can change the units here and put on pixel inches millimeters and centimeters i use centimeters because that's the normal thing here and let's say i want to make a square one 20 and 20 300 of resolution and then I have a square canvas. And now on the right side, I have my layers. So basic stuff. If you want to make a new layer, you just press this icon that says new layer and you make it. You can rename the layer by just double clicking on it and name it as the way you like it. Whatever you need. Let's say we're going to name it line art, for example. And maybe you don't like this layer in particular, you can just delete it with a trash can. Let's say you don't wanna erase the whole 
layer you just want to erase the content let's say you make this line and you say mm, i don't like this line you just go here and you just erase the content of the layer but the layer is still there also the order of the layers is very much important and to have different layers for different things will help you so much to save time because if I have done this on the same layer and I wanted to erase something, let's say I want to erase this part, I will end up erasing both colors, both lines. But now that I have it on different layers, there's no problem. If I want to erase this line here, I just go to this layer and just erase it. There, and I did not erase the top layer. You can also rearrange the layers. Just click on the layer that you want to rearrange. And um, let's say I want it on top, then I'm putting it on top of the red lines. If not, I just put it back underneath the other layer. And now let's say that I'm sure about these two lines, that I like them and I want them to merge them into one layer. I just use this one that says morph underneath i think that's the right uh, translation and there we go we just have it in one layer also if you want to be more organized with your work let's say you're making the line art of a drawing that you're doing whatever it is let's say this is your line art i'm sorry if this looks awful <laughs> this is super quick let's say you're making this and then on another lane you want to make the hair and in another layer you want to paint the eye let's say you want to do that but you don't want to do it all in one layer and you have it on different layers and it's all about liners so you make a folder here and you grab the different layers and you put it inside the folder and you can name the folder line art so you work here and if you click on the eye it disappears and if you click back on you can see it again it's not that disappears it's no longer visible but it's still there the content is still there it's not like you're erasing it and maybe you're sure about this and you just want to merge it it's the same as we did before but now it looks like a folder and you just click on it and you have one layer of it now i'm going to show you some shortcuts that i'm sure that will be helpful for you because i think everyone uses this kind of shortcuts the first of all is to go one step back with ctrl plus z i think it's pronounced z but on the screen you will see it written just in case you can go back i think I don't know the limit in Paint to Say of how many steps back you can go, but there are many, but don't trust this all the way. Ctrl Z, da 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 da, step back, step back, step back, step back. And let's say that you went a step back more than you wanted to, you can go a step further with Ctrl Y and it does it again. But let's say that you're super proud about your drawing. Save it. Save it as many times as you can. For a shortcut, you just press Control Shift S and you can save as. So I'm gonna save it as face. And there save. I already saved it, so there's no problem. But let's say I make a lot and a lot of progress with my drawing. And please, I encourage you to please, please save all the time. With Control S, you are saving little by little. So if there's any power out or something like that, your computer stops working, the program stops working, you know you save your progress. So please, every once in a while you make a little bit of progress, a considerable progress, just press Control S. I use it all the time. I save progress all the time because uh, 
once I made a whole drawing of Bakugo and I lost it because the computer stopped working. It was so sad. There was nothing saved. So please do this. Let's say you want to select the whole drawing and you want to move it. You just press Ctrl A and you have select all. And with this right here, this is the move tool. You just like move it with that. And to deselect, you press Ctrl D and it deselects the selection. Let's say you want to select a small part of the drawing. Let's say you want to select this heart right here. You can use this selection tool that is a square or a rectangular shape. This one that is a free, free selection tool or the magic wand. The magic wand works really good, but if all the lines are touching each other like this, you see it selected this, but not this or this obviously because they're not touching but it's pretty good whatsoever. I'm gonna use the freehand selection tool here. And let's say I wanna make it a little bit smaller. So I press Ctrl T to transform. And if you wanna keep the proportion of your transformation, use Shift while you're transforming your selection so it maintains the proportion. If not, if you lose Shift no matter what, it will change the proportion but if you lost shift along the way just press shift again and it will regain the proportion don't worry about it i'm gonna leave it there and ctrl d to deselect also if you want to use the moving tool you can just press ctrl and there there you have it obviously you're just moving the things that are inside of the layer that you're selecting you're not going to be able to move anything else besides the content of this particular layer. And another one that's pretty basic, maybe, but you don't know, maybe you don't like the heart anymore. Just Ctrl X, it will cut it. But as you may know or may not know, when you cut something, it gets copied. So if you press Ctrl B, it will paste again in a new layer. When you paste things in this program, usually in any program, when you paste things, they are pasted on different layers, remember that. And again, let's say I just wanna copy this heart, Control C and Control V, and there we have it. And to deselect, Control D. You see, we have different layers with different hearts. Before I go on with other shortcuts, there are other things that you should know. Is that here, this is a new layer of line work. Line work in Paint Tool Sci is the most similar thing to vectors that you can find on Illustrator. This works a lot if you want to make straight lines or modify some points like this say you want to make a triangle because there are no shape tools in paint tools a there are not like zero so let's go there and you can edit the points here say so here you want to make it here i personally don't use line work like at all because i don't find any usage for this but i encourage you to just, just like experiment with this you can also use the curve tool that is like the most uh similar way to make maybe a circle but i don't make circles this way i don't think they look good particularly i just tried to make them freehand also with the pen it corrects a little bit of the trace that you're drawing but it's not my gig i don't like it very much so let's delete that some other stuff that you may want to know maybe you are seeing your drawing and you're like mm, it looks kind of weird but i don't know why you can flip the canvas horizontally just by pressing the letter h like that 
and maybe you can see the inconsistencies because you're used to watching your drawing from one point of view from one side so I recommend you to just flip it with the H also you can rotate with these little arrows here I can also rotate it with the I don't know how it's pronounced super it's like the delayed one but it's written with an S I'm gonna <laughs> put the name on the screen here it's program this key to use it to rotate I don't use it this way because it feels weird I use usually use this keyboard key just to erase stuff so I just use this one you can also go back any steps with these arrows right here or back you can zoom in or zoom out you can also just zoom in with the shortcut control plus or control less <laughs> I don't know how it's called let's say you want to explore your drawing how you do that with the space bar you will see a hand and you can just move your drawing anywhere this is so helpful I use it all the time and when you zoom in with the mouse wheel or control plus you will see so close to your drawing and you want to explore all the details you just space bar here and you can just explore and make details like don't worry about it just do what you like maybe while you're drawing you feel like your stroke is a little bit weird there's this little tool up here that is the stabilizer it does what I said it stabilizes your stroke the way you draw a little bit maybe you think oh that's cheating it's not because when you draw with no stabilizer it's not like you the way you would naturally draw on a piece of paper it doesn't look like that and you can modify it to your liking like this to just go experimenting the S7 is the most stabilized that you can have it's a little bit slower because it's stabilizing while you're drawing it's not the most natural I use it when I want to make maybe a circle or something like that but I don't use it often I usually have it on 15 from 20 to 15 for stabilizing my stroke also here on the tools like I said before you can modify them let's say this is too big you just go here and you can modify it to be a little bit smaller the stroke and the minimum size is the minimum size that the stroke will be so let's say <coughs> the size here it's a hundred percent on the minimum size and your size is 30 points so it's not gonna be smaller than 30 points when you draw you see it's not smaller than this it's all gonna be the same size I don't use it because it looks unnatural to me because when you draw there's pressure and you make them a little bit big and a little bit smaller it's not gonna work like that and the density it's more like like the opacity it looks a little bit more blurry and if you go through it then you see that the color is getting darker I don't touch this much but here you have the shape of your brush and the texture that you may want to add to it I don't touch it either you have a lot of brushes that already come here and some here are just like ones that I made or I experimented and how you can make a new brush or a new tool you just double click on an empty space like this if this one if you want to make a new tool you just you if you want to make a new tool you just right click on this empty space and you can choose from pencil, aerographer, brush, watercolor, marker, eraser there is a lot of this and you have like the basic stuff let's say I want to make a new brush it's on default mode so it's like this 
this is a default brush but I don't want the shape of the brush to be a flat circle these are different names that are all in Spanish I'm gonna translate them in some part of the screen but I'm gonna use colcha here so it has a little bit of texture because I like it and let's say I want to add more texture the only two kinds of textures three actually I can make is paper texture paper and canvas texture this is paper texture that I don't actually see much of a difference with the original one and with paper texture you see the difference of the texture or you can use canvas texture and there there you go you see the differences i encourage you just to experiment and if you are not sure that you're making it right or not you can search for brushes in pinterest if you put paint to side brushes you'll find little tutorials with the configuration specifically for that kind of brush to use and you can also download more textures and more different sizes, different shapes for your brush, but I haven't done that, so I don't know how to do it. I'm sorry. Let's say you wanna know more shortcuts. How you do it? You go to others, shortcuts here, and you have all shortcuts all of them literally you put shift you have all the shortcuts with shift you put control all the shortcuts with control same with alt and you can even mix them like control alt you have these shortcuts and here on the right side you have the different kinds of shortcuts that you may have on this software and you see that some of these are like literally empty Let's say the K. The K has like no shortcut. So what do I do? Let's say I want to fill a layer and I'm going to put it to the K. So I select the K and I put fill layer and there we go. Now K is my shortcut to fill the layer. And here you can just click and see which keys are which with shortcuts so you know what you're doing this is a really good thing to know also if you don't know the shortcuts of this one and you don't want to search here you can just double click on the tool and here it will say key for the shortcut and you can modify it if you like and you can also modify the name of the tool and if you put a shortcut that is already being used for another tool, the program will tell you that, so don't worry about it. You can also put a shortcut for the tools that you made, like this, this pencil I made. Pencil I love, I put the J for a shortcut, so I know this is the one because I use it pretty much all the time for my line art. So I think this is it. This is, I think, a lot of things that will be super helpful for you when you're drawing. Maybe I will make another tutorial, maybe another part making my process while drawing because I use a lot of these tools while I'm making an illustration, so don't worry about it. Well guys, we have reached the end of the video and if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to know when I post next. Also, you can leave a like or a comment, that really helps me. And here's my social media if you want to follow me there. Thank you guys for sticking up with me even though I'm pretty inconsistent. I love you guys so much. I'll see you next time. Bye!